Well, welcome everybody and thanks for uh, tuning in to these six little mini sessions explaining a little bit about the major new Anglican document, God's Unfailing Word, and uh, a CMJ response to that. My name is Alex Jacob and I work with the church's ministry among Jewish people. Now, this teaching report, God's Unfailing Word, is this major new document by the Church of England. And really, uh, as you're listening to these little teaching clips, it's really good if you've got a copy of the major report. And also, CMJ has produced our own response to this report. And again, uh, that's really good to have as well. So basically, what I want to be doing is go through uh, the report using this new CMJ commentary, this new CMJ response to the report. Now, the original report you can buy from Church House Publishing, or you can download a copy from the CMJ UK website. Equally, um, the CMJ response, God's Unfailing Word, the response, is available from our new CMJ website shop, and you can purchase that for two pounds. If you're a Romans 15.8 member, it's free of charge. And I'll be going through this guide section by section over the next six mini sessions with you. Now, if you've got the um, CMJ guide and you turn to page three, that gives a little introduction to um, the Anglican report. Now, um, the report was launched on the 21st of November in uh, 2019 at the Queen's Foundation in Birmingham. And I was at that launch with about 80 church leaders and theological students. Um, in fact, when I looked around the room, I noticed there was two Roman Catholic bishops, seven Anglican bishops, and four senior rabbis. Now that sounds to me like the start of a fantastic religious joke, but unfortunately I don't have a punchline for that. But the launch was really good, and I think it's one of the, the most interesting times to see how the church is wrestling with this issue about how does the church relate to Jewish people, how does the church relate to Israel. And whatever you think of this report, the Anglican report, and whatever you think about CMJ's response, one thing which I think we would agree on is that this report will shape Christian-Jewish relations for at least another generation. So um, this report is, is very, very significant. Now, just to outline the position of the church's ministry among Jewish people, CMJ, we were not invited to be part of the report team. Um, so the report is separate from us, but as the report got towards its final stage, we were invited to make comments. And, uh, and I made a number of submissions to uh, the report editorial team, and some of those submissions were accepted and some were not. So in one sense, I think CMJ is disappointed we were not part of the original team, but we're equally thankful that we were able to have some right of reply and some contribution to the process before the final launch in November 2019. I think from CMJ, the report is good, but um, we have certain questions and certain comments. And as we go through these series together now, you will see some of our concerns and some of our suggestions, how the report perhaps could have been stronger and could have been uh, more faithful to our understanding of what the Bible teaches. So this Church of England report doesn't stand alone. It's part of a long tradition of reports from different church groups over the years. Perhaps the most famous one, which is mentioned in the Anglican report, is the report which came out of the Second Vatican Council in 1965. It's called Nostra Aetate, and it looks at relationships between the church and Jewish people, and between the Roman Catholic Church and other parts of the body of Christ. So in a sense, Nostra Aetate sets the tone for some of this religious reflection and theological teaching. In addition to that, there was a report by the World Council of Churches called The Church and Jewish People, published in 1964. And there's another report called Israel, People, Land and State by the Synod of the Reformed Church of Holland. I think that was 1970. And then there was one by the Lutheran World Federation called The Church and Jewish People in 1973. And then the Lutheran World Federation in Norway 
did a report called The Oneness of God and the Uniqueness of Christ in 1975. And then we had the Willowbank Declaration on the Christian Gospel and the Jewish People in 1989, which came from the Lucerne Concentration on Jewish Evangelism. And the same group in 2004 did a report called a Jewish Evangelism, A Call to the Church. And finally, uh, a Cape Town commitment from the uh, Lausanne Consultation in 2010 called A Confession of Faith and A Call to Action. So that just gives a little uh, tip of, of the iceberg of some of the reports written. And if you're interested in seeing how the Anglican report fits into the wider reports from various parts of the church, some of those reports will be really helpful to study. Now on page four, of the original report, the Anglican report, there is a lovely quote from the Archbishop of Canterbury, Archbishop Justin, and this is his quotation. Understanding the relationship between Christianity and Judaism is not an optional extra, but a vital component of Christian formation and discipleship. It informs our Bible study, our prayer, our worship, as well as our relationships with Jewish neighbors, friends, and colleagues. So it's really important that I think what the Archbishop is saying there is that this report and the issues it raises is not just for academics, it's not just a footnote, but it's actually a key part of Christian discipleship. Now that's something we've always believed in, in CMJ, but it's good to hear that affirmed there by Archbishop Justin. Also in the uh, original report, Archbishop Justin also said this about sharing our faith with Jewish people. He says this, to share the hope of salvation within us a hope coming from Jesus Christ, is the core of what Christians do. But we are told to do so with gentleness and respect. And that's exactly the CMJ position. We believe sharing the gospel of Jewish people is part of the DNA of being a follower of Jesus. But of course, um, we want to do so with gentleness and respect. We want to do so in appropriate ways, bearing in mind the history and the difficulties and the challenges within Christian Jewish relations over well over 2,000 years. So it's really uh, important to have those two quotations. If you turn to the report, um, the opening chapter looks at the theological framework for Christian Jewish relations. The, the chapter is called A Difficult History. And I think it's a really careful and well-balanced analysis of the so-called parting of the ways, the way in which the early church emerged out of biblical Judaism and the way in which the early church and rabbinical Judaism evolved and developed alongside each other from about AD 30 to the Bar Kokhba revolt in 135. So if you're new to some of this stuff, I think that part of the report, looking at the parting of the ways, is really good. The report also mentions philo-Semitism, um, but there's no examples of that in the original report, which I think is, is, a, is, is, a, is a shame not, not to have that. Um, let's just look then at some insights um, from um, the first section of the report. And um, from CMJ's perspective, um, there's a couple of key questions which we want to ask at this point. Um, so again, the report has at the end of each section some issues for discussion and some issues for, for, for questions. Um, and what we have in the original Anglican report is almost a discussion of Judaism, which is appearing to be, in a sense, homogeneous, that it, it, there's one type of Judaism. I think from CMJ's perspective, we would much prefer to talk about the Judaisms in uh, Second Temple Judaism. And I think if you allow a more um, kind of diverse understanding of Judaism, in a sense, it gives more legitimacy for Messianic Jews. Um, and there's a number of other important points to discuss coming out of chapter one. And um, on the CMJ response, there's a number of references to books which we would recommend to you. Um, we talked about the absence of any examples of philo-Semitism in the report, and uh, Rodney Curtis has done a book called Christian Philo-Semitism in London, and that's a really good uh, book to look at. We also have a wonderful book um, by Marshall Simon called Verus Israel, 
which looks at the uh, history of Jewish Christian relations, and this will add to um, the report. It will give some really important background reading. And a final big heavy book here is by um, the great uh, New Testament scholar, James Dunn. And James, here is, James Dunn is talking about a contested identity, neither Jew nor Greek, and it's called Christianity in the Making. And again, all the details of the publications are on uh, the CMJ response document. There's also another a few resources from um, CMJ, which is important on this opening section. We have a number of Olive Press papers, um, one by Michael Aldridge, looking at replacement theology, um, a really good paper, one by uh, an Anglican minister, Timothy Butlin, looking at supersessionism. Again, these things are mentioned in the opening chapter. And I've got a little pamphlet here, again, an Olive Press paper called The Parting of the Ways. And I think this kind of complements um, some of the teaching in the original Anglican report. Um, we also have a, a resource network for church leaders. And if you're a church leader and you, and you identify with the CMJ direction, then this little network, Romans 15.8, will be worth joining. So those are some resources from the first session. So the first session is really trying to establish the theological and historical issues. And I hope by reading the report and CMJ response, the first session really comes alive to you. And there's lots there to discuss and engage with. So thanks for listening and join me in a moment for uh, the second session. Thank you very much.